Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award-winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Postmortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Just try it. You're going to love it. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. We hope you're having a fabulous summer so far. While Anita and I spend some time with family and friends, we're serving up best of decorating tips and tricks. So get a cool drink, kick back, and enjoy the episode. Today, we're talking all about design ideas to try now. A lot of these I think you can do pretty simply and without a lot of expense. I love all these ideas, and I love something that you can maybe do in a day or maybe 15 minutes. Absolutely. Not a lot of effort and not a lot of expense. The first suggestion I have for a design idea to try now is to rethink a space or a room. This could cost you nothing because you could just do the rethinking part and you could act on it later. Or maybe the rethink is going to have you actually just shuffling things around or removing things. But Anita and I had a consult recently. And then last night I was with a client and this issue came up twice in this short period of time is that the person was using a room the way someone had used it who was the previous owner. You don't have to have the room stay the way the previous owner had them. You don't have to use your furniture and whatnot the way you did in your prior home. You don't even have to use the rooms for what they were initially intended for. Mm -hmm. So if you have a room, say a dining room, that's not being used very often, you can make it a book-lined study. You can change an infrequently used spare room into your office. So it's all about reimagining your spaces in this first idea. You know, that's certainly something that you and I think through all the time is, am I going to use this room the way it was used before? It isn't uh, an old bedroom now your recording studio, Kelly? Maybe is. <laughs> yes. So uh, make sure that all the spaces in your room are serving your current needs. So just don't cookie cutter it. Just don't put things where you thought they should be, where traditionally they would go, where somebody else had them. Think through each room and you might get a fabulous idea of how you can use some space in your home that you hadn't even thought of before and space that you'll actually make great use of. My idea is to create a comfy reading corner somewhere. And this could be any room where you have a little extra space. It could be in your breakfast room. It could be in your dining room, your study, your living room. Anywhere you have room to put maybe a comfy chair with a just a really fun, lush pillow, a little ottoman for your feet, a table to put your drink on, your glasses, a lamp there. That's really all you need. And you're all set to read a book or maybe watch a movie on your iPad, which I do sometimes. I love that idea. And, you know, we laugh sometimes to to each other or with each other that we create these little areas to sit down and relax and we walk past them a lot or run past them a lot. Even if you're creating it and you don't use it that often, but it's there. It just might be your your spot where you have a goal. Oh, I want to get there on a Friday afternoon, have a cup of tea or, or read my book or have a glass of wine or something like that. It'll make your spaces look so much more inviting. And hey, you might actually reach the goal and get there and get to sit down. And I think that's a wonderful way. And you can carve out a little nook in, in so many ways. 
I'd like it to involve a window somehow. So if you can Mm -hmm. angle a chair near a window or near a sliding door or something like that with a little ottoman, tiny little table next to it, maybe like a martini table. I think you guys might know what I'm talking about. They're just so slim that you can really just put a glass on it. It doesn't have to be a martini, of course, but that's what they call them. Really charming, wonderful little setup with just three little pieces or, or pieces you may already have in your home elsewhere and you can just bring them together and create this wonderful little space. Another idea to try now is to create some interest in your hallway. It doesn't have to be big and splashy. Well, I do really kind of like a hallway as almost like a palette cleanse between rooms, but sometimes they can be super boring and they really don't have to be that boring. Think about adding a runner maybe a very big piece of art. I think hallways are difficult in many ways to decorate. And as I said, you don't have to do too much, but it's not a place where you necessarily want to create a gallery wall and whatnot if it's not wide enough to really step back and appreciate what's there. But if it's a very large piece of art, you can appreciate it even in a narrow space. And you might think, oh, narrow space, big art, does that really make sense? Yes, it does. It'll really just blow up the space and make it feel bigger and definitely give it a lot of interest. Another thing you could do is paint the hall sides of the doors a different color. So maybe your hallway is all white or grease or just the same color as the rest of your house. And maybe the trim and the doors are as well. Paint the doors a different color. I recently did that and I am loving it. I wasn't sure. I was thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And I painted the hall side of the door. So it's uh, the bathroom uh, and three bedrooms on our very narrow upper hallway, black. And they look mm. so sharp. And I had a very simple flush mount up there. It was not a boob light. So if you have a boob light in your hallway, we want to banish all the boob lights. <laughs> You could put a very dramatic fixture and just do that. That and maybe a runner. That's all you'd have to do to create a lot of interest in a hallway. Another idea is to organize a group of three on your kitchen countertop. Uh, So one of the things I've done is I put two antique blue pottery pitchers on my countertop. And then I have an antique crock right next to them that has all my uh, utensils in it. The idea is just to have maybe one accent thing there. I don't like the idea of filling up the countertops all the way across. So this would be just maybe one accent. So you would have that there and maybe an appliance or two, but I don't recommend that you fill your countertop with groups of three, but maybe just have one group of three. And then I like to have pretty clear, pretty clear countertops the rest of the way around the kitchen. And I think that's a nice look, especially if you can add your accent color there. That's a great way to approach the kitchen counter. How about angling your rugs? I love having my rugs on an angle. So oftentimes in our homes, there's a lot of rectangles, there's a lot of squares, there's a lot of things that have 90 degree angles. Now, unless you have a round rug or an oval rug, the rug is going to have 90 degree angles, but I'm talking about the way you place it in the room. So rather than having it sort of straight on coming out from under the sofa or straight on coming out from under the bed, angle it. So the long side, unless it's a perfect square, but maybe the long side is facing the entrance to that room. Can you picture what I'm talking about? So if you've got a rectangular rug and you've got the long side sort of facing the entryway, I feel that that is more welcoming than having it meet you at a 90 degree angle when you walk into the room. Try it. It will, if you have rugs, it will cost you nothing just to shift it around and see how you feel about it. It's not going to work in every single room with every single furniture arrangement, but it works for me, I would say 75 or more percent of the time. I really like that feel. I think it's more welcoming to have it open to the entryway that way, and the rug present itself on an angle. Do you ever use rugs that way, Anita? Well, I've been trying to talk Evie into doing it because it's too long to explain, so I won't get into it. But I think that's really the solution for her living area is to angle it. 
And I have, um, well, it's crickets on that end right now. So. Oh, well, perhaps she'll listen to this episode. If she I, hears it from Aunt Kelly, maybe she'll do it. I don't know. I seriously doubt that. But uh, yeah, that was my idea. Uh, another idea is to paint something black. You know, we talk about each room needs lights and darks. And so each room needs something black in it. So if you don't have something black in it, how about painting something black? And uh, the example I have is a a lamp that I bought from a friend who was going to sell it. And it was gold. And it looked a little, I thought it had pretty bones, but it looked a little dated. And so she sold it to me. And I painted it a matte black and changed out the old lampshade for a nice neutral kind of linen colored drum lampshade. And I thought it was beautiful. And when she saw it, she wanted to buy it back. <laughs> to which I said, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, or you could sell it to her at a higher price. That's a true friendship <laughs> oh, yeah. right there. Well, I did I did put a lot of labor into it. Oh, no, I'm sure. And I, you're speaking my palate when you're talking about the linen shade and the black lamp. I love it. Painting something black is such an easy way to add some elegance to your room because black is a very elegant color. I think the little black dress, right? You can't go wrong with it. And as you know, if you've been listening to us or if you're into design, you've probably heard this. Each room should have a little something black in it. It really makes a difference. And people who have taken this tip from us have come back to tell us that it really made an impact in their decor. So try it. If you don't have some black, yeah, spray paint in something. Mine is, my favorite is the matte black spray paint. I, I use Krylon usually. Really easy to spray on. You can do a lamp like Anita did. In fact, I just did a ginger jar vase that was uh, all floral and I just wanted to be simple black. It looks fantastic in my bookshelf right now. But you nice. can add black in a lot of different ways. You, you could get some pillows with some black in it. You could get some just piece of decor with black in it. It's a really important thing to have in each room. Another thing you can do is wallpaper the back of your bookcase. What a wow thing that you can do. And I am really itching to do this, but I don't really have a good place to do it. But I want to do this so badly. Now, here's a takeaway. If you have chandeliers with those little shades on them, take the shades off. See how you feel about it. Sometimes the shade, like in a regular lamp, is going to date the fixture. So I'm picturing kind of a really dated one, maybe the shiny brass with maybe a Provencal slash April Cornellish looking little pattern on the shades. Take those off. See how you feel about the fixture without the shades. Or if you really feel like you need shades, update them. Do something in maybe a wicker or something in an animal print. Just something that will sort of jazz it up and make it fresh. I love the animal print shades on a chandelier. I think that's a great idea. And it really adds just some fun and fabulousness to a room. And another way to add fun and fabulousness to a room is to go to the fabric store, find a fabric that just really speaks to you, and get two to three yards, depending on what you need, and use that as your own custom tablecloth in your dining room. And it's okay even if it's not quite uh, the length of your table. You know, we like to turn them sideways where the ends of the table show. Uh, and it's so easy to do. Uh, and we're just talking about a couple of yards of fabric, so it's not that expensive. If you are not someone who sews, uh, just use some no-sew hem tape. And, uh, you know, you don't even have to get the sewing machine out. And that's just a fun way to do that. I have so many tablecloths from fabric that I loved. And sometimes you can get, go look in the remnant section. It's pretty easy to find two yards of something that, you know, that they're were just the end of the bolt that they mm. weren't able to sell. And you can get a great deal on them. Yeah, and even pinking shears could be your friend in that regard, depending on the type of fabric, right? You oh, could just, sure. So pinking shears, if you're not familiar, they create those little like sawtooth um, end. So you could just finish it off like that. 
That's right. And then you don't have to worry about it praying so easily. How about this? And you could do this with maybe any a little bit of that fabric that might be left over. A little accent pillow on your bed. So it could be a pillow you already had. You can make it from some fabric that you got. You could purchase yourself a brand new accent pillow, maybe something with a monogram on it. Just a small pillow. It's not going to set you back a lot, but it's going to make a big difference on your bed. Oh, I love that idea. And well, you and I have lots of pillows, so <laughs> I don't need to go get one. <laughs> right. You of... could just shuffle them around. I just Once rotate you have a them. collection, you rotate them around. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt speaking of the bed uh the next idea i have is is you know layer things on your bed uh you know you can go overboard with too many pillows but if you just have a bedspread on your bed or a coverlet it's great to fold a duvet at the foot of your bed or fold up a beautiful blanket. So, you know, don't don't use an old ratty blanket, you know, in the back of the, the linen closet. Get something. I have a blue leopard print a blanket that's beautiful at the foot of my bed. Or you can or I have like a twall coverlet that I put there sometimes. There's so many pretty coverlets you can get or blankets or duvets and it just just to put at the foot of the bed it adds so much color and interest, and it just looks so luxurious. Oh, that really would. And it's so true. It just feels finished when you do that. So if you had your little extra accent pillow, maybe in a pop color, or as I said, a monogram, just something really special, and then you put something at the foot of the bed, wow, what a difference. And maybe you just took something out of the closet, or maybe you know you invested just a little bit of money in a new pillow or something like that. Big difference little effort, low cost. Check your stash of decor. Rotate something out. 
that'll cost you nothing, just a little bit of time. And it's fun. I mean, I think anybody who's listening to us has a stash somewhere. And so go into that cupboard where you put things that, you know, maybe you had out a year or two ago or maybe more years ago and take the time to rotate those pieces out, fall in love with them again, integrate them into a vignette, highlight them in your home and put the stuff you've had out for a while away. It's going to feel fresh and new. My next tip goes with yours, and that is to redo your bookcase. So, because you're probably bored with it, you probably did it maybe a long time ago, and you haven't really done any. You know, you've just been walking past it and not ignore and not really paying attention to it. So, take all of thing, take a picture of it first in case you want it back the way it was. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, take that picture, but then take everything out, and and then as you put things back, see if there's some other stuff in the house that you want to put there. Like like Kelly said rotate what you have in the bookcase, put some books back. Uh, But I would challenge you, as you put things back, leave a lot of bare spaces because I think that's the mistake a lot of people make is putting too much stuff in those bookcases. But I think that's a fun thing to do and you can try different looks. But take pictures as you go because it may be that you say, oh, well, I actually liked the thing I did 30 minutes ago better than what I did just now. And you want to remember what that looked like. So take pictures as you go. Look at the pictures, the thing you like best, go with that. That's such a great tip to leave some breathing room around all the items. You don't want to cram everything in there. You want to have a little room around each item. So you could have your books on the horizontal, you can have them on the vertical, and then very, very selective and curate what you're going to put back in that bookcase. So here's something that maybe you're going to have to go out and buy something, but think about mixing something in to your decor that's the opposite of your general vibe, your general look, right? So something that's going to give off a different feel than what you have in your home that the majority of the pieces are, right? So I suggest, so if you're traditional, say, Mix in something modern, mix in something contemporary, mix in something that is going to create a little tension and make your room really interesting. If you're mid-century modern, then maybe mix in an antique that isn't mid-century modern. Mix in something that's older. Just change it up a little bit. That is going to create so much interest in your space. And now I'm using these words modern and contemporary. And people say, well, aren't they the same thing? Really not in design. So modern is the 1900s through like the 1950s. Everybody kind of thinks of that collectively as mid-century modern, but there's postmodernism too, which is like sort of then dips into the 70s and the 80s. Then contemporary is kind of a different thing. So that's more like the late 70s. Contemporary is more of a mix of styles where modern is a very definite look, like you can conjure up the mid-century modern look. So contemporary is more of a mix of styles There's modernism, postmodernism, the little art deco in there, a little futurism. And contemporary is always changing as each decade passes. So think about something just, something newer, the last decade's look kind of gets blended into contemporary. So whichever of those things you're drawn to, if you have sort of a traditional type home, I challenge you, Anita just challenged you, I'm going to challenge you too, I challenge you to Add in a modern or contemporary piece and see how that feels. So picture you have a very traditional dining room table. Maybe put a very contemporary bowl or vase or just something simple, just to be one piece and see what that does to the overall feel. I like that idea. I mean, I think that's nice to kind of mix something then that, like you said, add some tension And really, that's what adds some interest. You're looking for something unexpected. That's Mm -hmm. kind of part of being successful with decorating is putting in something that people are not expecting. That's kind of, that's what draws your eye. Yes. If you're not expecting it. Another thing that I love to do is to decorate with plates. And something you can do if you want a real impressive wall, maybe in your dining room, is to, I think this is best if the wall is a darker color, but you can do it with a white wall. But to do a little bit, maybe like a Wedgwood blue or something on the wall or Tiffany blue and then get white plates uh, and you can use 
vintage or antique ironstone, or you can buy new plates and the new ones will be much cheaper. So that works too. Uh, and then hang those on the wall. And I just think that is such a gorgeous look and it's, it's just really stunning. It really is. And so easy to do. And it's, it's kind of art in of itself, right? Especially if it's against a really dark wall. I think that would really look sharp. How about leaning and layering your art on a mantle or in a bookshelf? So instead of hanging it, it can be framed or unframed. It, un, when I'm saying unframed, I'm thinking more of like canvas pieces and whatnot rather than you know something loose on paper. But it could be on board. I have plenty of vintage works of art that are on board. So it's a casual look. It's kind of a European look. But it can have a modern feel to it too. It's not so stiff. So think about having maybe three pieces of obviously of different sizes or you're not going to see them. Or you could have maybe two pieces of art and even a mirror and layer them, play around with them. And again, kind of like the rug I was talking about on the in the angle. So you have to play around with it. You have to be a little creative and artistic with it and the way you're presenting it. But picture three different pieces of art maybe one eight by 10, a four by six, and maybe some little miniature or something leaning up against each other. So you can appreciate what each one is showing you, but they're a little obscured by each other. So together they're creating in its another work of art grouped together like that. And I love that look on a mantle. So maybe you have that on one side of the mantle and then on the other side, maybe you have a taller vase with something in it that's sort of, you know, dripping over just some softness or candles. I think that could be really beautiful. And it's probably different than what you have on your mantle right now. Well, I love the look too. And of course, part of the reason I love it is because you don't have to hang the artwork on the wall you're just leaving it as long as it's not going to keep sliding (laughs) as long as it's not going to keep sliding out you're you're golden so i think it's a great option i love that and then you know when you change out artwork you know if the artwork's not all the same size you keep having to put in a new nail because it's a different height Mm -hmm. so that's perfect if you've got if you've got it on the mantle and just use it as a, a leaner there so An idea I have that's super easy, if you really don't like the look of your headboard, you can cover it with a tablecloth, a quilt, a bedspread, or some sort of fabric, and just kind of drape it over the back of your headboard. And this is a wonderful look, and it, you know, it's kind of behind your pillows, so it's, it's another layer of fabric, you know, just kind of make sure it kind of works with the other fabrics you have on the bed, but I think that's such a nice way to really kind of disguise a headboard that you're really not that crazy about. That's a great idea. I'm back to the art. How about adding little easels around your home? These work really well in bookcases because sometimes you have a smaller piece of art and it doesn't even have to necessarily be a traditional painting. It could be some other type of art. It could be something in a round frame. It could be just about anything that you want to highlight. Little easels are great to have in your stash. You could get them in metal or wood. I have some in, well, I have some in both those things. I also have some <laughs> in bamboo and I even have some lucite ones. The lucite ones add a little touch of modern uh, or contemporary, depending on the look. And they kind of fade away. You don't see them. But I love my bamboo easels. And they even have the little chain. And they're small, but they have the little chain that sort of attaches to the the piece that's going to hold it up in the back. And it really says, look at me when you put a little piece of art on an easel. I love those little easels. And I have so many of those. And the... uh... The black wood ones work really well for uh, plates and things if you want to display Yeah, they plates. do. They kind of just cradle them in there. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's a perfect way. And I love having little hand-painted art. That's something I like to look for when I go to consignment stores or thrift stores are those little pieces of artwork that's hand-painted. And a lot of times you can get a good deal on those, but those are so fun to display around your house. So I think the easels are an excellent way to display those. Now, this next tip of mine is going to take a little bit of work, 
But, you know, if you're bored with your house, what about painting your laundry room cabinets a fun color? The thing about it is it's less risky than than working on your kitchen cabinets. Obviously, that's a bigger room. It's more of a commitment. And what if you don't like it? That's a much bigger space and a bigger deal to change out. But your laundry room, usually that's a room that you shut the door and it's a much smaller space. So it's not as risky as your kitchen. And that's usually a room that just the homeowner goes in anyway. So it's kind of a, it might be a fun surprise, not surprise if you did it, you know, it's in there, but uh, <laughs> but it'd be a fun, a fun, you know, secret space to have where it's kind of painted a fun color in there. So I, I like that idea. Yeah. Along the lines of creating a little jewel box in a powder room or something. I like that a lot too. Yeah. Make it really beautiful because you're doing some chores in there. So you might as well love the space while you're in there. So while you're in the laundry room, why not hang a chandelier in there? I think that's a fun thing to do. And if you don't want to do the wiring for the chandelier, you can always just hang a candelier, which is not wired and just has candles in it. That's a fun thing to do. And that's what I did in my laundry room. It's just a little fun thing I have in there. Uh, layer rugs. You talked about angling a rug. You could angle a rug on top of another rug that you have below it. And then the last idea I have for today is to replace some of your dining room chairs with a bench. I think that's a fun look. Oh, I love that look. I haven't done that, but I love the idea of it. I I wouldn't do it in the, the dining room that I have currently, just the way it's situated and you have to come right through. But I, I would like to do that if I ever had another dining room, especially if that the bench could be against a wall. I think that's oh, such yeah. a nice way because then you can push the table out of the way a little bit too. That, that gives you a lot of versatility. And I do have a chandelier in my laundry room and it makes me happy every time I go in there. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. Except the, what I do sometimes is if I take a towel out or, of the the washer or the dryer and I kind of flick it, can't flick. No, <laughs> makes, no, you can't. It hit all the crystals. <laughs> oh no, that's not. Yeah. Somebody flicked uh, in our bathroom no and flicked the, uh, yeah, not paying attention to the fact that there was a chandelier over the tub and uh, broke some of my crystals. So I was like, okay, no towel flicking in here. I've suffered that pain as well. And then when they're I... vintage, it's hard to get the same crystal again. Exactly. But, oh, what we have to put up with Anita. Uh, remember, we're here to not only inspire you, but to help you with your room. So if you need help with your living room or really any room in your house, you know, we would love to help you. Uh, we do consults all the time. And a lot of times it's just one consult that's needed with people. They just kind of want to know what to do in a particular room. And it's amazing how many, it's kind of like our our um, podcast episodes, only it's specific to your room. And we just have a flood of ideas about what you can do, arranging them, what to get, what not to get, what to get rid of. And it's it's a it's a lot of information, and uh, we'll include a link to those consults, but we do these all the time, and we would love to help you. We enjoy doing them so much. Not only do they get our creative juices going, but we get to talk to you. We love every minute of it. We love analyzing your photos. We love saving you money, <laughs> saving you money, and helping you be happier in your home. And we love, love, love getting the after photos. So after the tips and advice and suggestions have been acted upon, we love getting those follow-up emails. Very happy clients. And so we'll have a link in the show notes, but if you just happen to be going to our website, decoratingtipsandtricks.com, you can look at the top, click on consults, and that'll give you all the information that you need. Terrific. What are we defining today? Well, we did talk a lot about the bedroom today, so I thought today would be a great day to define matelassé. It's a double woven fabric with puckered surface effects, a sturdy textured, often cotton fabric, having a puckered or quilted appearance, often used in bedding or upholstery. So typically, matelassé is used for bedding, although it can be used for upholstery. It's almost always for bedding. So think of a quilt, only instead of individual pieces, it's one piece of fabric on the top, one piece on the bottom, and then it's been typically by machine, sewn into a quilt. And then it's got batting in between the two layers, and then it's sewn together. So typically it's one color, but sometimes uh, they're patterned fabrics that are used. 
Uh, so, and then it fits on the bed like a coverlet. And I love using them uh, for all kinds of bedroom projects. And you probably have one in your house somewhere, Kelly. Um, one? Yeah, I do. I have several and I love Matt Mosse. It had so much interest because of the puckering and the texture. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. What's your crush? I'm so excited about this crush. Rarely is something better in person than you can conjure in your mind or that you can see on the internet. This rarity is true with the clutches made by Coastal Clutch NY. Absolutely beautiful. Not only are they beautiful and more beautiful than you could imagine, but they're one of a kind. So these are a clutch that you would use to go out on the town or go out for the day. They're a wonderful size. They're handmade, hand designed as well. So the fabric is chosen. The inside fabric complements it and usually is a little wow. And then they are adorned and embellished with vintage brooches. These clutches are so stunning and they are made by my first cousin once removed. Wow. She's doing an amazing job on Instagram. I want you all to head over to Instagram and check out Coastal Clutch New York. So Coastal Clutch NY. They are handmade, small batch. You are never going to see the same one again, maybe the same fabric, but there's going to be a different embellishment. There might be a different inside fabric. You're going to absolutely love these. And what a wonderful gift for Mother's Day, which is coming up in not the too distant future, or as I always like to say, a self-gift is always in order. So... (laughs) 
the way you get in touch is through messaging on Instagram. So follow Coastal Clutch NY on Instagram. I'll have the link in the show notes. And then you just send a message and you could just say, hi, you know, Kelly and Anita sent me from Decorating Tips and Tricks. Or you could say, I want that one. And that's how you'll be able to get your clutch in your clutches. <laughs> you are going to be blown away. You will never see another person with this clutch bag. There's just one of a kind. So definitely go check out Coastal Clutch NY. Wow. I've already looked it up. Those are beautiful clutches. I know, aren't they? Anita, and you're such a handbag person. You might have to get your clutches on a clutch because they are so beautiful. I do love a good purse. So yes. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, my crush is something completely different. Uh, we watched this fun movie. Uh, last weekend on Amazon called Walking on Sunshine. Have you seen it? No, I don't think so. Well, if it if you liked Mamma Mia, you'll love this. <gasps> liked Mamma Mia. That's just the happiest movie. And Mamma Mia too. And sometimes we would do, binge them both. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're going to like this. It's uh, I, I think it's maybe came out in 2014. So it's a musical set in Italy in a coastal town. And it's very reminiscent of Mamma Mia. The girlfriends come oh, to, for, for a it. wedding and they stay together. And of course, you know, mayhem ensues, uh, but nothing too, too sad. It's all very lighthearted and fun. And it's all 80s music. Oh, how fun. Walking on Sunshine. Did so you? I actually, yeah, I watched it myself and I enjoyed it. And I thought my family would enjoy it. So I actually watched it again, at which in most movies you couldn't watch twice close together but it's just because it's i enjoyed the music so I, oh i can listen to that music again well that's what, about mama mia my girls will just be like oh i think it's mama mia day and we'll just put oh. it on and even if you're doing something else and you're just like oh my gosh it could be on in the background and it makes you happy exactly so, oh i'm definitely gonna watch that so yeah everybody head to the show notes get both those links you're gonna love both things yes and thanks so much for hanging out with us and remember we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home until next time Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.